Oh, hey, how y'all doing? I'm Christian. I'm one of the worship leaders here at the Victory Center located at 432 Wooster Road, North Barberton, Ohio. Listen, we are three minutes away. Three. three. One, two, three. Okay, got three. Three minutes away from the greatest worship experience y'all ever seen on this side of heaven. I need y'all to do me a favor. I got my phone, okay? I need you to get yours. I need you to go to the Victory Center page. And I need you to share, like, and tag. I need you to share, like, and tag, all right? Then I need you to hashtag victory. I got it? I got to go. I got to go. name of our God in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness we've come to give God praise today we've come to give God worship are y'all ready for worship y'all know what time it is it's time to share this broadcast it's time to experience a victory this is the day that the Lord has made so we will rejoice and be glad in it let's talk to the father real quick God we bless you we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. We are excited to be in your presence. We're excited to give you glory. We're excited to give you honor. We're not worthy of being here, but Father, because of your grace and your blood, because of your hand upon us, you've allowed us another opportunity. So Father, we know this is virtual, but we've come this day to give you our best, our best praise. Come on, lift it up. Our best worship, come on, lift it up. We've come to give you our best. Our best, our best, our best. And so, Father, receive nothing but the best today. And we give you praise. And we give you glory. And we give you the honor. I said we give you the praise. We give you the glory. And we give you the honor. I said we give you the praise. Hallelujah. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. One more time. We give you the praise. Come on. We give you the glory and we give you the honor because this is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. Hallelujah. Come on. Wherever you are in your home, in your cars, on your jobs, put your hands together with us like this. I will re- 
rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, oh, oh. Put your hands together. 
you are because you fight for us you are you fight for us you make ways for us you provide for us you fight for us you win for us you fight for us and you win for us you are you are the victory 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 let the musicians play You are the victory. 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 I need you to get something in your mind that you need God to fight for. You need God to win for you. You need God to show Himself. Get it in your mind. Get it in your heart. He is a victory. He is a victory. He is a victory. You are the victory. Over cancer, you are the victory. over depression, you are the victory. over suicide, you are the victory. over anxiety, you are the victory. over insecurity, you are the victory. over fear, you are the victory. over worry, you are the victory. over doubt, you are the victory. You are the victory. You are the victory. Over diabetes, you are the victory. over arthritis, you are the victory. over this COVID, you are the even this pandemic, you are the victory. 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 You are the victory in the Baptist church, in the Pentecostal church, in the Apostolic church, in the Church of God in Christ, in Ohio, in Atlanta, in Seattle, in Washington, in D.C., in New York, in Texas, in Tennessee, in this nation, over the country, every nationality. You are the victory. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. You are the victory. You are the victory. We worship. We worship. Adore you. Adore you. We declare. We declare. You are the victory. You are the victory. You fight for us. You win for us. You'll never lose. You fight for us. It's Eba You win. You'll never lose a you fight for us. You win for us. You'll never lose. You fight for us. Hey. You win for us. You'll never lose. You fight for us. Hey. You win. You win for us. You'll never lose. You fight for us. Hey. You win. You win for us. You never lose. You fight for us. He is fighting for you now. You win for us. You never lose. Hey, you fight for us. And it win for us. You win for us. You never lose. You never lose. Help me say You never lose one voice. You never lose. 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 You never lost. You never lose. 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 He fights for us. He wins for us. You never lose. You fight for us. You win for us. You'll never lose. You'll never lose. He fights for us. He wins for us. You never lose, you fight for us. You win for us. Let the drums play real quickly. I want to declare that God is fighting for you. God is winning for you. 
Hatamashebra. And we speak the strength of God now. Uh, to everybody that's in a battle and you feel like you're at the end and you feel like you're defeated. In God, we are never defeated. And we declare this day that God is fighting for you. Yeah. He fights for us. He wins for us. Hey, uh, he fights for us. He wins for us. Help me say, uh, he, he fights, fights for, for us. us. He wins for us. He wins for us. He fights for us. He fights for us. He wins for us. He wins for us. He fights for us. He fights for us. He wins for us. He wins for us. He fights for us. He fights for us. So last time we say, we worship. We worship. And I adore you. We declare, we declare you are the victory. You are the victory. We worship, we worship, adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare you are the victory. You are the victory. We worship, we worship, adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare you are the victory. You are the victory. We worship, we worship, adore you, adore you. We declare, we declare you are the victory. You are the victory. This is a good moment for those of you to go and sow and plant your seed if you need God to fight for you and you believe that he is the victory I dare you to sow the cash app is on the screen all the information is on the screen but when you send this seed I need you to title it he is the victory I prophesy today that there's a victory on the way I never do this but I prophesy that within the next 30 days of this broadcast, within the next 30 days of you viewing this, God is getting ready to turn and change everything concerning that situation. We prophesy according to the level of our faith. So we agree right now in the name of Jesus uh, that God, you're meeting every need. Uh, you're supplying every need. Uh, oh, rain only means something when you have seed in the ground. So Father, we declare that you're releasing the rain. You are releasing the rain. You are releasing the rivers. You are releasing the oceans. All our seed. We declare there is a victory. There is a victory. Hey, there is a victory. 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 Everybody clap you. There was a victory. There was a victory. And it's coming to me. It's coming to me. It's coming to me. It's coming to me. There is a victory. 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 I prophesy. God bless you. If you know that there is a victory coming to your life, I dare you right here just to honor and bless God. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's lift his name. If his name is great, I dare you to bless him. If he does wonderful things, I dare you to bless him. If he does marvelous things, I dare you to bless him. Somebody open up your mouth. Hallelujah. 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 There is a victory. This is the victory. 
that overcomes our faith, even our faith, and it overcomes the world. His name is Jesus Christ. And I'm so glad that you're with us once again here at the Victory Center. Go ahead and just put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. And bless him. You need to tell somebody, you need to type somebody's name on that screen and tell them in the comments, you need to tell them to get in here right now because God is doing something amazing. He's doing something awesome. He's doing something now. He's doing it in my life. He's doing it in my wife's life. He's doing it in your husband's life. He's doing it in your family's life. He's doing it in your children's life. He's doing it on your job. He's doing it because there is a victory. Hallelujah. There is a victory. I thank God for our worship team. I thank God for our music ministry, for leading us today, for taking us uh, this route. And, and we honor God. We honor God for, for doing that. I hope um, that you have enjoyed it thus far. I also hope that you got your seed in. Uh, uh, there, is, there is something that the Bible lets us know that there are two things that remain there. That is seed time and harvest. And you got a soul at the right time so you can reap at the right time. May I suggest to you that God is prepared to bless you when you do it in his timing. I, I want to challenge you to get that seed in. All the information is on your screen. I'm going to get into this word. Uh, I, I don't want to I don't want to hold you too long, but there is there is a victory. There is a victory. Oh my God, I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to compose myself and get this, this timer started. But there is a victory. I thank you so much for being here. Once again, I want you to tag somebody. Uh, I want you to share this. I want you to start a watch party. Um, if you're on YouTube, man, just, just, just invite somebody. Copy that link and, and send it. Send it to your Facebook. Send it to your Twitter. Send it. Uh, to your Black Planet in MySpace, whoever you got to send it, send it to, please uh, bring them on in here uh, because I believe God is about to say something to, to us. Um, hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Uh, I, I want to um, I want to jump right into this word. Grab Exodus chapter four. and We're going back to verse two. Uh, God gave me some more stuff to deal with. Um, in Jesus name, he gave me some stuff to 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 work with here. And I, I want to um, I want to make sure that we we do that, um, that we get into this uh, in these next these next 25 minutes that I have with you in Jesus name. Bless us, Father. We need to hear from you. We need to hear from you like we never had before. We love you. We honor you and we give you glory, uh, honor and praise in Jesus name. Thank you. Uh, to each and every one of you. Once again, we're in we're in Exodus chapter four. I'm in Exodus chapter four, uh, starting at verse two. Uh, Exodus chapter four, uh, verse two. We're gonna come from the King James version version of the Bible. Excuse me. Um, hallelujah. Let's roll. And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod or a staff in other versions. And he said, cast it on the ground, and he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Excuse me, and Moses fled before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand, take it and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto you. And the Lord said, furthermore unto him, put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put his hand into his bosom. And when he looked, uh, when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous as snow. And he said, put, uh, put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand in the, into his bosom again and plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again as his other flesh. And it came to pass, if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. 
And it shall come to pass if they will not believe also these two things, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take of the water of the river and pour it upon dry land and the water which thou taketh out of the river shall become blood on the dry land. I want you uh, to join me in announcing. I need you to say it. Uh, there are two things I need you to do here. I need you to articulate it. I need you to vocalize it, say it out loud, and I need you to type it. I need you to say and type the miracle. There is a miracle in me. There is a miracle in me. There is, let me say it one more time. There is a miracle in me. Bless us in Jesus name. Ladies and gentlemen, Moses, throughout this discourse, we have found that Moses is having this conversation with God. And as he's having this conversation with God, he's beginning to talk himself out of the 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 work that God has for him. And as he's done so, God receives or listens to Moses, giving uh, seven reasons why. He wasn't the man for God's task. He talked about his lack of capability, he talked about his lack of message, his lack of authority, lack of eloquence. We'll talk about that next week. Lack of fitness or adaptation, uh, a lack of previous success and a lack of previous acceptance. Moses has found himself in a place, in a season, uh, in a valley of excuses. And uh, if you've ever heard me preach for any uh, period of time, you know that one of my favorite quotes is the excuses quote. Excuses uh, are tools of incompetence which build monuments of nothingness, and those that are those that specialize in them are seldom good at anything else. This is not a season for you to make excuses. God knew exactly what He was doing when He called you. He knew exactly who He was calling when He called him. Don't be like Gideon asking for signs over and over and over again. Don't don't find yourself in a place where you're saying, God, uh, show me if this is really you. I need you to do this, that and the other. But may I suggest to you, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a miracle in you. There is something inside of you that you don't even realize yet. There is something that the world has not been able to visualize yet. There is something on your life, in your life that is special. And, and you must understand that God knew exactly what he was doing when he called you. He knew, he knew exactly your pedigree. He knew exactly who your mother was. He knew exactly who your father was. He knew your whole lineage. He knew their, their mistakes. He knew their mess ups, but he also knew he also knew uh, their successes. And I came to tell you on assignment today that God is about to use you because there is a miracle in you. When you realize that there is a miracle in you, there is nothing that can stop you. I want to pause and say this very quickly. Every problem has a solution. And what if I told you you were the solution to every one of your problems? I believe I believe inherently that that God put something in us so that we could solve our problems. That is that is exactly where Moses is. Moses does not realize when he is saying uh, uh, this, that and the other. They won't listen to me. They won't hearken unto my voice. They 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 won't accept me. They will continue to reject me. So I'll raise up my insecurities. And, and Moses does not understand that God has put something so special in him on him and he's going to use him in a spectacular way. Now we find here uh, that as we discussed last week, God asked Moses a question there in verse two. He says, uh, uh, what do you have in your hand? God did not ask because he did not know, but because he understood that Moses did not realize. What if I told you you don't realize how, how major and how powerful you really are? You don't realize the anointing that flows through your through your body, through your uh, through your blood right now. There is something in you that is powerful. And if you could ever tap into it and say, yes to God, you would understand. And God is about to do something in Moses' life through this text and doing something through us uh, uh, through this text that's going to propel you into a new season of your life. He says, what is that in your hand? He says it is a staff. It is a rod. It is something, a shepherd's staff, something that he carried around as, as protection, as a reminder 
of, of what God has brought him through. And now Moses is in a place where this simplistic tool is about to be used for God's glory. Look here in the text. It says God told him. God told him, he said, uh, uh, he said, cast it on the ground. He says, he says, cast, cast your, 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 your staff, your rod to the ground. He says, take what's in your hand and I want you to throw it down. I want you to, I want you to throw it on the ground. He throws it on the ground. When he throws it on the ground, ladies and gentlemen, it says, uh, it became immediately a serpent. Look at verse three. Uh, it says in the A, B, C, D, uh, E clause of the text, it says it became a, serp a serpent and Moses fled. Let me stop and talk in my first point. The first point is that we see a snake and a staff. The first miracle that we see here is the snake and the staff. He says here, in the, it says here in the text that Moses fled before it. I want to show you two pictures here of what this serpent stands for. I want, you show, I want to show you two pictures of, of this staff that has been thrown to the ground, what it stands for. Moses, I believe, not only was he fearful because Moses uh, uh, was, 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 was uh, I'll get into that in a second. Moses could not believe that God was commissioning him to do such a work. May I, may I talk to somebody out there right now who, who is under the sound of my voice, my brother, my sister, my friend, my, my cousin. Listen to me. What God is commissioning you to do may seem complicated and complex, but I came to tell you that the I am is in control. What you have been commissioned to do may be complex and it may be complicated, but I came to tell you that the I am is in control. If God is in control, you must understand that you have nothing to worry about. He's going to be with you. Somebody shout and say, he's going to be with me. I believe that he's going to be with me. I believe that this staff throwing it down is a picture many times of our gift. Many times, many of us, we become afraid of the gift and the calling on our lives and we find ourselves running and fleeing from what God says, I want you to come closer to. Here it is. I got to tell somebody out there that you cannot. I don't want you to make the mistake of giving up because you can't see the outcome. Don't give up because you can't see yourself in the in the tone that God has called you. You can't see yourself as the person that God said you would be. Here it is. You don't have to have all the answers. You just have to have a yes. Y'all not talking to me. You don't have to have all the answers. You just need to have a yes. Look, he threw it to the ground and he fled before it. The old saint said it like this. If God can bring you to it, then God can bring you through it. I don't care what has been thrown at you. I don't care what's been said to you or said about you. If God called you, he also qualified you. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 as, as a shepherd, this is what I wanted to tell you earlier. As a shepherd, Moses is very adept at analyzing and avoiding snakes. But now God is telling him, I need you uh, 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 to, to pick up this snake. Look here. It says in verse four, and Moses and the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. He, he, he understands as a shepherd how snakes function. He's watched them. He's seen them because he has to protect his sheep. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. Snakes can be handled two ways. One of two ways uh, uh, that that would make sense. Number one, if you are if you are familiar with snakes, you understand that you pick up snakes uh, if you're familiar, you pick them up by the head. It's a certain place on the head of a snake that you can pick it up because you're not trying to get bit. You're not trying to have venom flowing through you. You're not trying to die because of a snake bite. Uh, uh, you can you if you're trained, you can handle them uh, by by grabbing them just below the head. But also, if you're not um, uh, trained in that, you should handle them about one third of the way of their body. Here it is. Because snakes, by essence, have very weak cores. Their core is weak. They, they require the ground to push up off of. So if you grab a snake around about the, 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 third, the, the, the third quadrant uh, towards the end of their body, uh, uh, you, you, you can control how they attack. You can control their movements because one part of their body is almost parallel with the other. So they don't have enough strength. But that's not how God told him to grab it. 
it. He told him to grab it by the tail. And in this, this is the most dangerous place to grab a snake. If you grab a snake by the tail, ladies and gentlemen, they can they can move and 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 whisk all over the place and watch this. They can turn and snatch you and 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 attach themselves to you. Here it is. He says, grab the snake by the tail. He says, if 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 you're going to grab this thing, I want to I want you to grab this snake by by its very tail. Uh, here, here it is. Here's here's the good news in the text. I, I want to show you. Uh, uh, God told him to grab the snake by the tail. And it's a no, no. Here's what God God was saying. He says, I'm going to give you victory over what I'm telling you to grab, even though you'll be vulnerable. God says, I am protecting you. I have you covered. I got my hand on you. I got my hand, my arms around you. I got it under control. So Moses, pick it up, grab it by its tail. Now watch the text, y'all. The text says, that he grabs it by the hand. Moses didn't have this, but we do. The text says in Mark chapter 16, verse 18, and they will with their hands pick up, take up serpents. I came to tell you that the picture that God is trying to show you in this first point is that God has control over the serpent. I came to tell somebody who is out there right now worried about the devil on your track. The devil is getting in your body. The devil is getting in your finances. The devil is getting in your mind. God said, I got control over it. Take it by the tail and it won't harm you. Nothing's going to hurt me in this season. Devil, you hit me with your best shot, but I'm still I'm still here. He says, take it up by the, take it up by the tail. He says, he says, take that snake up by the tail. Take it up. I know it's vicious. I know it's hissing. I know you're afraid. I know you're ready to give up. I know you're, you're ready to run from it. But he says, take it up by the tail. Why? Because here's what's going to happen. When you take it up by the tail, it's going to turn back into the staff. Woo! Here it is. God says, I put a miracle in your hands and you're going to have the power to change some things in your atmosphere, in your environment. Somebody give God glory and say, I got power over this serpent. Hallelujah. The second thing that we see after the snake and the staff, we see here, ladies and gentlemen, we see here that the Lord, he tells, he tells, he tells Moses, he says, look, if they don't believe that first miracle, verse five, that they believe that I'm the God, that the God of the Lord God of their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared unto thee. If they don't believe that, here it is. I'm going to give you another one. He says, and the Lord said, the further, said furthermore to him, put now thy hand in your bosom. The word, the word uh, bosom here in the Hebrew, it is a, it is a word. Uh, it is, it is, I hope I pronounced this right. It is, uh, 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 I, ain't gonna, I ain't even going to try. Uh, it is C-H-E-Q, uh, and it is like a crack sound. It, is, it sounds like crack. It, it refers to folds or pockets in a garment. So when he says, put your hand in your bosom, it's literally a pocket. You, you know, uh, 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 I, I live in Northeast Ohio, uh, 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 and some of you do too, or, or you've gone through some cold seasons. And, and anytime I get cold, I got to put my hands in my pocket. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? I got to put my hands in my pocket because, uh, uh, because the, the amazing thing is sometimes when you put your hand in your pocket, it, it, it kind of helps warm things up. You know, you got to warm your hands up. You got to warm things up. Uh, uh, but that's not what God was telling him to do there. He says, he says, put your hand in your pocket, in your, in your bosom, uh, uh, because these, these were located above the belt and the hands or the objects could be concealed there. There was something inside that he did not realize. Moses placed his hand in such a bulge in this garment. Watch this. He says, put your hand uh, in your bosom. And when he took it out, when he took it out, uh, Lord Jesus, I done put this thing on wrong. He, when he took it out, it was leprous as snow. Let me, let me put this on right so y'all ain't talking about me. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. When he, when, he, when he put his hand in, it came as white as snow. It was leprous. Not only did God tell him I got power over the serpent, 
But secondly, he says, I got power over leprosy. Now, Pastor, why would that make sense? Because in, in Moses' time, they believed that leprosy was a sign of sin. Oh, God. He says, he says, not only Moses do I have power over the serpent, but I also got power over sin. He says, put your hand in your pocket, put your hand in your bosom, put your hand uh, uh, in, in this, this concealed garment. And he made his hands leprous. Hold up, God. How 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 you gonna make my how you gonna make me leprous? I, I didn't do nothing wrong this time. I didn't say nothing wrong this time. He says, I gotta deal with something that you rarely deal with. I gotta deal with your sin. I gotta deal with the stuff that can't nobody see. I gotta deal with the stuff that you won't show nobody else. I gotta deal with the stuff that, that you keep trying to hide. I gotta deal with the stuff that you keep on uh, 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 sweeping under the rug. He says, What I'm doing in this season is I'm dealing with sin. Now, here's the good news. The good news, ladies and gentlemen, is God doesn't deal with sin like people deal with sin. Because if you allow people to deal with your sin, uh, they'll, they'll throw you away. If you allow people to deal with your sin, they'll, they'll, they'll cast you away. They'll tell everybody what you did. But here's what God does. This is what I love about him. He covers your sin. Why? Because the text says that love covers a multitude of sin. God says, here's what I'm doing. My, my next miracle is I'm going to deal with your sin. I'm going to cover you. He says, he says, put your hand in your bosom. When he took it out, behold, it was leprous as snow. And he said, put thine, your, put thine hand back into your bosom again. And he put his hand in his bosom again and he plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it was turned again. God says the, the next time they see you. They won't be able to see the remnants of what you did. They won't be able to smell the weed. They won't be able to smell the liquor. They won't smell the, the, the fornication on you. They won't hear the lie coming out of your mouth. God says, I'm dealing with it right now. Is there anybody that's glad to know that God has the ability to go in you, take out what was there, put it back in and make it disappear? God says that's exactly what the blood does. That when the blood covers your life, it causes sin to disappear. Y'all not talking to me. I got to go. I only got a couple more minutes. And it says, behold, are y'all getting something out of this? Lord, he says, number one, I got power over the serpent. Number two, I got power over over sin. Hallelujah. But he says in verse eight, and it shall come to pass if they will not believe thee, neither hearken to the voice of the first sign. Notice it says the voice uh, uh, and they will that they will believe the voice of the latter side. Here it is. Every testimony. Watch this has conversation connected to it. You God can't deliver you and do something in your life without something being said about it. Here it is. It's not you speaking for you. It's your testimony speaking for you. It's your miracle speaking for you. Is there anybody out there right now that has ever had something go on in your life that you thought you'd never get out of, but then God turned around and caused that miracle to arise and the miracle started speaking for you? He says, he says the, the voice uh, uh, of the, the first sign, the voice of the, the latter sign, but in it will come to pass if they will not believe the, uh, also these two signs, neither will they hearken unto your voice that here's what you got to do. He says, I want you to take some water from the Nile River. I want you to take some water from the Nile River. I want you to take that water and, and I want you to pour that water and it's going to become like blood. The water is going to become like blood. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, the water is going to become like blood. I want you to show them this. And when the water becomes like blood, I want you to pour it out on the ground and it's going to become like blood. Then watch this, y'all. He says, I want you to take I want you to take uh, 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 take again that water. And pour it in and 
watch it turn back into water again. Here's what I'm coming to tell you. God is saying hallelujah to the lamb. God is saying that in this season of your life, I'm changing the makeup of what has been going on. I'm changing the way that it looked. I'm changing the way that it was because I'm coming to deliver my people. I'm coming to do something special. What if I told you prophetically that you're right seated, situated in a season of miracles? The miracle ain't going to look like everybody else's. God is performing something to make you believe again. God is performing to make you trust again. Your faith is about to be on an all-time high. He says, I need you to show them this so that it's not just you, but the world is going to believe again. I got to get out of here. I said the world is going to believe again. Somebody shout it and say the world is going to believe again. He said, I need you to take that water I'm going to turn it to blood and I'm going to turn it back into water. He says, he says, he says, he says, when you pour it out on dry land, they're going to believe. They're going to believe again. And, and I, I came to tell you, y'all. I don't have no fancy S word for, for the water into blood. I, I know I said the serpent in the staff. I know I said he got power over sin. But, but I, 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 came, I came to tell you that God is about to perform a miracle. Now, where did all of these miracles come from? They came from God through Moses. That's how I got there. That's how the subject topic came about. Because God did not physically come himself through this bush, he instructed Moses. Moses was obedient and his obedience brought forth the miracle. Let me say it again. He spoke to Moses through the bush. Yes, Lord. He spoke to Moses through the bush. Moses uh, uh, replied in obedience and then the miracle came forth. What are you telling me, Pastor Dante Lamar Thompson? Here's what I'm telling you, and I'm closing up shop. Here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you that obedience is about to facilitate major miracles in our lives. If, 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 the, if the Bible was written for our benefit, then, then we can take what's there and we believe it's a season of miracles. It's a season of, of, of breakthrough. It's a season of deliverance. It's a season of, of diseases drying up. God is saying, yes, Lord, God is saying, I believe that God is saying that the miracle is going to occur, but it's not going to be out there. It's going to be in here. I ain't talking about the church building. I'm talking about in you. Somebody lift up your hands and say the miracle is in me. I just have to be obedient. Yes, I'm fearful. Yes, I ran from my gift. Yes, I had my staff. Yes, I, 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 I didn't know what to do with the serpent. Yes, I had disease uh, uh, on my hand. Yes, I saw the, the water turn into blood. But, but this time, God is saying, I'm going to make the miracle occur through you. What if I told you that 2021, I don't care when you're watching this, but 2021 is your year of a miracle. Multiple miracles. Can, can, I, can, I, can, I, can I explain something? I got 28 seconds. I got to stop. What, what I believe God is showing us is that it does not have to take a long time for miracles to happen. But maybe miracles haven't happened because we've taken a long time to be obedient. Miracles don't have to take a long time, but we've taken a long time to be obedient. And God is saying, come back in obedience. Honor me when you don't understand me. Uh, uh, I, I, I need you to believe again. I need you to trust again. I need a voice. I need somebody will be, that will be unashamed to stand before my people and proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Father, we love you. We honor and bless you because you're better than good. You're better than great. But Webster's Dictionary, the Oxford uh, uh, Dictionary, uh, does, not, does not give us a word that matches what you are. So we just say thank you. Father, we're asking you to use us again. You've called many of us that are, that, are, that are under the sound of my voice. You've called many of us to great works. 
to great ideas, to great things. And fear has, has gripped us. What people think of us has gripped us. What we think of ourselves has gripped us. But I'm asking you now, God, to challenge us in a way that fear exits. Fear flees. Yeah, we ran from our gift. We ran from our calling. We ran from that stuff. But it's because we were fearful. Let fear be far from us. God, I thank you that there is a miracle in us. I thank you, God, that you've allowed all that has happened to happen so that we can come to a place to see your power manifest. And so we say we love you. We say we honor you. I hope, God, that your people got this. I hope that the ideas that you gave me, the illustrations that you gave me hit home. And, and this was not just uh, 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 a, an, an exercise in futility, that this was not a whole bunch of stuff that happened to get people excited, but it, it caused us to connect to your word. I ask you now in the name of Jesus to bless us because we've heard your word. We'll give you the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody clap your hands and thank our God for the great thing that he does. There is a miracle in me. Uh, hallelujah. If you're not saved, I want you to send us an email. I want you to send us an email immediately so that we can pray with you, uh, so that we can talk with you, so that we can connect with you. Uh, so that um, we can make sure that you are not outside of the ark of safety. We also, um, if you want to just connect with us, if you want to be a virtual member, please, uh, by all means, you see the information on, on, your, on your screen. Please contact us. Shoot us a text. Shoot us a text. If you want to be a part of this ministry, all you got to do is text partner. The world has changed, y'all. Um, you don't necessarily have to be in the physical church in order to be a, a member of a church. And I wanna challenge you, I wanna challenge you uh, to, to step out the box. You, you've never been inside of Netflix, Netflix's, Netflix's, Netflix, the headquarters of Netflix, have you? You've never been in the headquarters of Apple. You're, you're a member of, of, of Netflix, you're a member of, of Apple, or Samsung or Android, whatever you got, you, 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 you know, you, you try not, you, you've never been into the headquarters of DoorDash, but many of you have accounts with them or you have uh, um, um, connection with them. The same holds true for the church. You don't necessarily have to be in the sanctuary. We're living in a different time now. Now, I do understand that the word says where two or three are gathered together. Uh, uh, he said he'll be in the midst, but we're in a different time. And that don't change the Bible, but you need to be a part of a ministry. And if you are a part of this ministry and you've been lacking and slacking, you need to come on back home. Come home. Um, let's give, I know we, we, we had the information earlier. If you haven't gotten your tithe in, Please do so. Um, we have an updated cash app. I will. It, it is in the comments. So please uh, take note. Uh, it is the Victory Encounter uh, cash tag, the Victory Encounter. So please take note. Um, I hope I hope that you enjoyed the message. I hope that you enjoyed the worship. Um, I, I, I'm I'm good. I love it. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Um, Get ready for a shift. Somebody just type shift. Uh, there is a shift coming uh, to the Victory Center. And, and I, I, I truly believe um, that if you're not focused, you're going you're gonna to miss the shift. Um, God is, is moving. God is moving. I believe that he's spiritually pinging us in different locations, in different places, in different times and spaces. Uh, hallelujah to the Lamb. But um, thank you so much for being with us today. All of our visitors, we love you. We honor you and we bless you. And we'll see you on the next time. This is Pastor D. I'm out.